Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing so well, having an amazing week and welcome to this oil painting time lapse and a video about how I am progressing with some of my oil paintings, which is in at the end of this oil painting time lapse. So if you'd like to skip to that, I think it's around 13 minutes. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, it's roughly around that time. So that's when I come on camera and talk about the paintings that I'm working on so far. So other than that, this oil painting took around three weeks and I've only included some clips of my oil painting. So obviously I had to work quite significantly off camera because I couldn't film the entire oil painting process. Then the clips would take up too I mean, my phone is already at like maximum in terms of memory. I think if I tried to record absolutely everything, my phone probably would have exploded or something. <laughs> I don't think it's even possible. I usually just record clips of my um, oil painting process. So I do hope you enjoy it. And this painting, as you can see, I already did an underpainting to start with. And now I'm just going over the top with some really strong color to start to get all the shapes and the snails and the cat all in the painting. And in this video, I thought I would talk about different oil painting techniques because it's actually a fascinating subject. Now I know it doesn't sound that fascinating, but bear with me because what's so interesting about oil painting in general actually is that you discover so much when you start to take on that technique. I mean, when I started oil painting that as you may or may not know, I mentioned it on my channel quite a few times, I am self-taught. So when I started oil painting years ago, I thought that there was one technique to paint with oils and that was basically a layering technique. And I don't exactly know where I learned this. I think it was just that I sort of heard people saying, oh, you have to layer your oil painting. And that was all I'd heard like my whole life up until that point. And so I thought the only way I can do this is if I let the first layer dry, then go back to it, then start to paint the next layer and then gradually layer upon layer, you will achieve a, an oil painting. And so this is the technique that I employed when I started oil painting. And I did this for a few paintings initially and each painting would take me about three months. So it was a very long process and um, I really did enjoy it, but there were times when I gave up. So this was right at the very beginning when you don't have any sort of system to force yourself to finish a painting. So I would just start painting and then I would go back to the painting after some time. And my materials were not also not very good. They were sort of really, really cheap materials because that was all I knew about. It wasn't necessarily what I thought was best, but at the time I didn't know if I was going to continue with oil painting forever, um, but I did really like the feel of it. And up until that point, I had actually been painting with acrylics because acrylics are pretty much the paint that you will work with when you're working at school. So if you start painting at school, like if you do art studies or art A-levels, for example, then usually you work with watercolors and acrylic. And so those are the paints that I were familiar was familiar with. And obviously with acrylic, you can basically finish a painting within a few hours. And it's pretty straightforward because it's kind of like layering as well, but because each layer dries so, so fast, you don't even really feel like you're layering. You just think, oh, I'm just letting each layer dry and then I can go back in straight away, start adding the shad shading, the shadows, etc., etc. So it's actually, it doesn't feel like you're layering, but you are layering. It's just that each layer dries very fast. And the same concept works with watercolors as well. So what's interesting is that when I started to find my way in oil paints, I suddenly realized that there are probably more techniques out there that existed, uh, but I didn't really know about them. So then I started to learn about oil painting techniques. And then I realized that there are so many, there are so, so many oil painting techniques. And the most comical part about oil painting, and I think it's probably the same with acrylic, with watercolor, with drawing, uh, definitely the same with drawing, is that you, when you start to do it, you think, oh, it's actually going to be quite quick that I reach some high level and high standards. But actually, funnily enough, 
the more you start to work on it, you realise that it's a really long time before you reach a high level. And I think that that's what puts people off. Very often they think, oh, well, I just won't bother to learn because I've heard that it takes so long to become really good. And so therefore I'm just going to not bother with it. But I think it's so worth it. Like it's so rewarding. And the moment you reach a kind of breakthrough point when you're working on an oil painting or an acrylic painting and or watercolor or drawing or whatever and then you suddenly realize oh I've just learned how to do how to paint something in a particular way and I've learned a particular type of skill that makes that look really good and you suddenly find that you've done it you've done that one thing and it makes your life so much easier because you know how to do it so I do think it is one of the most rewarding processes, but it's definitely, for me anyway, been a really long process to achieve any kind of level in which I'm satisfied with. But at the same time, I do think it is important that uh, you look at those videos on YouTube that say like, oh, you can how to, you know, learn how to draw like a professional in five minutes or something, <laughs> because those videos do help. And it's not like it's ever going to make your drawings worse I don't think but at the same time I find that especially with oil painting I have never discovered a shortcut to doing things I feel like whenever I'm working on a particular technique I just the more and more and more I practice on it the better I get and there's no like trick that I can do that skips me from one le like one from the first layer of oil painting to like the tenth layer there's nothing there's no like time machine or anything that gets me there I just have to keep working really hard at it and then I achieve it so it's been pretty funny because I've been working on multiple paintings at the moment and nothing is finished <laughs> and so that's why I, thought I would show you at the end of this video all the paintings that I'm working on but it's still at the pretty much the pace that I am always at which is each oil painting still takes about three weeks if I'm working you know constantly on it and I don't think it's too bad it's not too bad a time frame it's just I've thought to myself I could always do it really quick if I just tried this this and this and if I skip this area and I have tried those things before and nothing has ever get got to me to a point where I'm satisfied with my painting if I do that so Therefore, I've decided that I'm just going to stick to my techniques that I've learnt and I'm just going to continue the way that they are and not get frustrated and be patient by the fact that they take three weeks. And it's so funny because I am one of the most impatient people. I just want to like get there. I just want to finish. And uh, working so many hours, you would think that I would have found a way to jump, start and you know, go really fast. But unfortunately, it just hasn't happened and I know some people would say oh well three weeks isn't that long but for me I always feel like I wish I could do it in a couple of days. Now I also want to talk about the fact that I am trying to do more alla prima paintings as well so this kind of will take away the impatience of waiting three weeks because I have also been doing on smaller panels just been painting you know landscape and like portraits just really quick and I do think that an, having an ala prima technique as well as having um, a kind of longer painting technique is important because I used to think you had to choose between one or the other like oh you have to be somebody who layers all your paintings and then you know doing the layering technique and then your painters will take a while but people will expect to wait that long you know but then I thought it's so important as well to be able to just go out with your easel somewhere and be able to paint something and to be able to do it with great skill and and depict the feeling and the mood in that moment. And so I do think that having an a la prima technique is so important. So if you are somebody who is uh, someone who works during a long process, like sort of two, three weeks, maybe a month, I would highly also recommend to try doing a la prima as well because it's a great skill to have as well as what you're already doing. So you don't have to stick to one skill, one technique all the time, which is something that I thought you had to do when I started. <laughs> but now I know that it's great to do both. And if you have like a third skill, even better. And I'm kind of pushing myself to do a third skill, which is to keep drawing. Because one thing that I used to get so uh, enveloped in oil painting that I wouldn't draw 
and I've gone out my sketchbook and I've put it right next to me. So I'm forcing myself to continue to draw because I think drawing is such an incredible skill. It is so relaxing actually in comparison to oil painting or any type of painting, I think. Uh, it has a very calming quality. So if you are just doing something else, you can just stop and just take a moment to slowly draw something. And of course it isn't easy by any means, but it's certainly something that has, I think, a calming effect. And sometimes my paintings are so frustrating that I sort of tend to get more stress than have the calming effect. So drawing, I don't find quite as frustrating. I think there's something about the way you move your pencil <laughs> that has this like therapeutic feeling. Uh, so at least that's my theory anyway. So I would suggest that if you are somebody who has given up drawing or used to draw a lot and then you just put it away and you thought oh god I can't be bothered anymore and you focused on maybe your paintings or maybe you've just given up everything <laughs> then I would highly recommend just getting out a sketchbook just opening it and then leaving a pencil on top of it and then even when you're just you know, maybe watching a film or maybe watching the football at the moment because everyone's watching the football because England have got really far, which is just like a miracle because <laughs> we usually get knocked out quite early on and all of a sudden uh, we've done really we've done really well. And so if you're watching the football, you could easily take your sketchbook and just sit in front of the football and whilst everyone is jumping up and down and going crazy, you could be calmly drawing something. <laughs> and so that's a great way to engage yourself and to make sure that you're not giving up your art and just keeping going. And so I do hope you like this painting. Um, I actually had great fun with it. I got a bit stuck because once I had painted the snails, I wasn't entirely sure what to do with uh, the very far background, but painting in some plants and things actually really helped this painting develop. And so I do hope you like it. Here is a close up. There is a print available on Fine Art America. I have my profile on there. I will leave a link to it below. And I do hope that you would take a look and if you like this um, painting then obviously there's a print available so right now I'm going to switch to myself hello everyone if you have made it this far I wanted to just quickly show you some of my oil paintings that are in progress so unfortunately I haven't finished anything yet due to my technique that I'm using for these oil paintings some work in progress paintings now please do forgive in the early stages of my paintings particularly, I don't know if it's safe for other people who paint with oils, but for me particularly, in the early stages, my paintings tend to look really weird or terrible. So firstly, we have a bunny rabbit kind of leaning back on a chair. This is, again, in the really early stages of painting. And what's really comical about this is I was actually planning to just paint a bunny rabbit in a chair. <laughs> but when I started to paint, the angle of the chair was sort of to the side and I thought actually that would be really interesting if the bunny was like leaning back and relaxing because I don't know about you guys but I always do this I know it's quite dangerous I lean back in my chair whenever I'm on the, my laptop or working I just lean back and on many occasions I've like always fallen back but it hasn't I've never actually fallen back completely like gone smashed onto the floor yet which is really surprising because I am a very clumsy person so here we go this is um bunny so far bunny rabbit eating plenty of fruit and there's going to be a lot of fruit and delicious things possibly cake we have another oil painting and this is much further along than the bunny rabbit um and this is obviously of a lady in a forest with sort of all kinds of magic happening all around and I have some various different stories to go with this painting and actual fact in actual fact this painting was supposed to be finished a little while ago but I'm using I'm experimenting with a different medium and actually the medium is quite a slow drying one so I'm just waiting till this is completely dry before I sort of resume on this one so this is really fun and oil painting went through a lot of changes in the sketching out stage but once I'd figured out the composition I then did a full-on underpainting for this one so actually um, everything was kind of mapped out so I didn't have to change the composition later on and finally I have this oil painting now this is completely wet so I'm just hoping that you can see it properly because sometimes the light reflects and it just looks confusing uh, but this is completely wet and um, this is a much more experimental piece because in the sense that I haven't done a 
created a full-on underpainting. I have just started to work out the landscape in the background and I'm going to paint on top of it, but I do have a definite idea of what is going in this painting. The reason that I didn't do a full-on underpainting for this one was just because I actually was kind of thinking about several ideas and I wasn't sure which one would work. So I thought I'll just start painting and then the ideas will come to me. And thank you so much for wonderful comments on my last video. As always, I truly appreciate all your feedback and kind comments. I hope you have an incredible week and I will see you soon. Take care guys.